What's up, fellow survivors? This is Cruxon here, and today we are talking farming. This is a update video to how farming is in 7 Days to Die Alpha 7.2. My last farming video was a huge success, and it taught you guys a whole lot about farming in 7 Days to Die. And it showed you how you could farm underground or indoors, and how to do it easily and how to take advantage of the game mechanics to do so. And it's super awesome. But they changed a lot when it came to Alpha 17, um, after Alpha 16. Um, so things have changed. So I just want to kind of update you guys on a little bit of that. So that's kind of what we're going to do today. And this is our test facilities for this episode. This is going to be a quick update video just to kind of give you guys a heads up on what to expect as you dive into farming in alpha 17 hope you guys enjoy let's jump into it our first stop here is our lineup of plants in seven days to die you must be familiar with these plants before you go out and start planning your your farm uh, so the lineup has not changed from previous uh, versions of seven days to die it still remains the same so our lineup is corn at three tall nothing changed there everything else at two tall except for your mushrooms over there so you got your corn your aloe vera your hops your cotton your coffee golden rod yucca mushroom spores blueberry potato and chrysanthemum those that is your lineup of uh of plants that you could grow in seven days to die nothing new there they haven't changed anything with alpha 17 i have not heard of any changes to that for alpha 18. Uh, so this is your lineup now what they did change is kind of how you go about farming they've drastically overhauled all that uh, so the first step here is obviously tilling your earth so we have this nice dark dirt here you must still do that to plant anything once you go ahead and do that, you can go ahead and plant them as long as the environment suits it. So obviously it needs to have, uh, you know, it needs to be have light from the, the sun. Um, and then you can go ahead and plant that. There is no need to fertilize anymore. So before, you would have the option of adding fertilizer to increase your yield. You no longer have to do that. It's just till the earth with a hoe and plant the seeds into the ground and it's as easy as that you have your tilled earth and you could pop those seeds right in there and you're all good to go um, they changed how you get your yield now so by default when we plant these into the ground like this everything returns only one yield and you're probably thinking like well that's not going to work because i plant one seed and i go and get one return for that how am i ever going to be able to to get more seeds to plant more crops uh, well, it's actually worse than that, but it's actually much better than that at the same time. But first off, when you are creating your seeds, it now calls for four. It's calling for four corn stalks to create one seed. Now, to me, that's a little ridiculous, but that's how the game is now. So you need four. Um, but this isn't all bad because you can get that number with just one seed so you find your one quartz corn seed out in the world you go ahead and plant it it grows up to a full stock and you're like okay well i'm only going to get one in return but go ahead and pick it anyways it now remains a seed in the ground so i could actually hit this again and pick up this seed but i just harvested one corn you saw that pop up on the screen and the seed remained in the ground. So now I can let this grow again and collect another corn. And once I do that four times, I could create another seed and plant another stalk in the ground. And then I'll have two. And I could always pick that seed up. So if I already have planted, I could always pick it up and oh, let's get on the ground here. I could always pick that up and then use that elsewhere. So I don't lose that seed ever. I could just keep letting it grow and harvest, grow and harvest. And the cycle can continue um, but that's still a very 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 slow process um, especially when you look at you know you need four for each seed so i'm never going to be able to increase my yield um, that's not entirely true because they have drastically changed that as well so we're going to jump into our our perk system which had a huge overhaul uh, we could create a whole video on each of these uh trees of perks uh, but for this video, we're going to jump into what 
what matters most, and that's uh, living off the land. And this is where they, they change the game on us. So you can see, you can craft seeds from crops. It's like, okay, that's great. I could craft my seeds. So if I had bought that, I would be able to take my four corn and then make a seed out of that, which is great. That's super important, especially if I'm trying to start a, a farm to support myself. Um, but then you can see you have your additional... Uh, items here. So I'm going to go ahead and put a couple more in the fortitude because I'm going to need those for my perks. I'm going to go back to living off the lands and now I could buy the next tier here. And you can see it, it'll tell you how what you could get over here with what level. So I could even get the next one. So you can see harvest two items from planted crops. So we're going to go ahead and get that. That's awesome. That's super important. Then you have harvest three items from planted crops. Now, and then you also have four and you have five. So let's see how high we get. I don't think I get quite that high. So yeah, I need seven. So we'll drop another. Yeah, see the next one is three points. So I can't get quite that high here, but that's okay. This is for a higher level of the game. But I can now harvest three items every time I pick a crop. So I already harvested my, my corn over here. My aloe vera, it is grown. Everything's grown. Yep, everything's grown here. So we'll go ahead and harvest aloe vera. So pay attention to how many I get. Obviously, I get the three. Boom. Three. I'm well on my way to being able to uh, get more seeds. Now, obviously, if I already had um, had it, uh, had it more of these, I'd be getting three for every single plant. So boom. I'm already almost to my next seed. If I had a, another plant, I would have it, and I could have more. So every time I harvest now... I'm getting three. Now that is a great yield, um, especially once I start getting more of these plants going. Very quickly, you're going to have a great stock of uh, different plant items to you know to cook up. And seven and Alpha 17 has brought us a whole slew of new recipes and changes how s recipes work. So it's very important to get get these farming supplies and then get your cooking going. Um, so they drastically change it. You could cook all sorts of new stuff and they change everything up with it. But you can see that, that with this new perk system, uh, you could still increase your yield without fertilizing. Um, and then obviously after you harvest something, it does not go away. That seed stays in there. So that's a free seed for you. Boom, it's still growing. Boom, it's still growing. Boom, it's still growing. Everything is still growing. Super easy. Uh, super simple, everything like that. Um, and also you could very easily tell when something is ready to be harvested. So as you can see here, goldenrod seed, goldenrod seed here. Uh, same with the others. It tells me they're all in seed format. Um, and just to kind of touch on the mushrooms while we're here, mushrooms are no different. They have some other special properties, but they're exactly the same as far as that go. Uh, same with all the plants. And I get three for everything I'm harvesting. Uh, because that's what my perk allows for me. Um, and if we jump over here to our farm, our corn plants are fully grown over here. Um, and then we have our corn seeds planted over here. Um, now there is an in-between stage, so you'll have your seeds and then it'll be growing. So it does show you when stuff is getting close to harvestable. Um, and then you have your plants here. And then boom, I could just go down the line and harvest all these bad boys. And you can see I still have that free seed that always remains in the ground. And even if I could even collect it, you can see I collected that seed so I could always move my plants around without worrying about losing seeds. Uh, so that's kind of how the far actual farming aspect of it works. Um, very different, but I think it's a vast improvement, mainly that the seeds stay after you harvest. I think that's a super useful feature, especially since usually when you're collecting your, your yield, uh, you have to replant everything now. You don't have to worry about that. It's just boom, 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 harvest and run off, and they're good to go. And that's pretty much it for the actual farming section of it. Um, just to recap the recap uh, the whole uh, growing indoor part, we're going to jump over to some examples over there now. Now, this wouldn't be a great farming indoors example without touching on the unique crop of mushroom. Now, mushrooms can still do a lot of unique things that all the other plants can't do. So as you can see, I have mushroom growing here on the ground. I have mushroom growing here on the wall. I could plant more all over this wall. I could plant more just anywhere in the dirt here. No tilling needed. And you can see it grows to full size. You can't do that 
You can't do that with uh, your corn seeds. It will not grow unless the ground is tilled like you have over here. It just won't grow. But mushrooms, you could plant anywhere. You could plant on the walls. You could go up here and plant it on the ceilings. You could do whatever you want with this. And unlike previous alphas, it doesn't seem to be too affected by if you do plant it in, in tilled ground or if you plant it on the walls or whatever, plant on the concrete over here. Um, it doesn't seem affected. It grows at the same rate. You get the same yield out of it and all that good stuff. And then obviously you could grow these suckers in complete darkness as well. Uh, so actually, do, 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 my example over here, over here is complete darkness. I don't have any light sources anywhere nearby and we can still grow these in complete darkness. So that's where mushrooms are a huge advantage uh, to other crops. You don't need anything special at all for them. You find your spores, you start planting those bad boys and you have a good mushroom supply going very quickly. Now the other ma amazing part about growing indoors is that it's super simple. So I have my light source here and I'm just gonna kind of recap kind of what we're looking at. Now, from your light source straight above, you could grow obviously directly below. So that's right there, directly below our light source. And then you could grow eight out, or seven out from there. So that one being your first one, and then you have two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then we'll pop this guy up real quick and eight. So you could grow eight out from your center point. So that ends up giving you, uh, you know, kind of a weird circle formation. So if you're growing it out, you know, I could put one there because obviously that's my eight solo paces or spaces. Now that also counts for when you start going off to the sides over here as well. Um, so, you know, this one would be my seventh. So I could grow here, but this right here, I cannot grow even though the earth is tilled because that's my ninth spot. So that's seven, eight, and then nine, seven, eight, nine. So I can't grow. Um, so that rule applies all the way around. So I could grow there, but I can't grow in this dead space over here because the, my light source over here does not reach. It goes eight out. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then that would be nine over here. Same with here six seven i'm sorry five six seven eight and then nine so it kind of gives you this weird shape um that you could grow out so you can see the kind of the pattern we're making over here uh so you want to judge your farm accordingly when you're growing indoors because your light source does matter if you don't want to open up the whole roof to make sure you could uh, fill your whole space. You wanna make sure your space is defined correctly. Um, so this still gives you, if you only wanna have one opening to kinda keep it minimalistic, or if you're playing on a, on a, uh, you know, a PVP server or anything like that, and you wanna keep it hard to get into the base still, so you just need your one opening, um, make sure you're growing in certain patterns that would allow. So obviously within this space, we kinda, get a, a number of patterns so we could get our square get a number of rectangle patterns that fit within this growing space that we kind of developed uh, with this one opening in the ceiling and i'm going to pop out really quick and show you a good example of kind of a pvp option you could do here now as you guys know with alpha 17 they vastly increase the ability for zombies to reach you and one of the biggest ways they did that is they could dig now uh, so growing food underground is not always the greatest case success especially if you're going to be underground making noise and zombies start digging to you now farming is a fairly uh, quiet task uh, so you're probably okay in most cases doing that but it might not always be the good option but you can always grow inside in your base in a room you know, it could build upwards and things like that. Um, but in some cases, you still want to be able to bury your farm, and especially in a PvP, it could really give you an option to have a great food source that's kind of out of out of sight, out of the way of PvP, and you could really develop some clever ways to kind of hide that. So if we're out and about, it doesn't look like there's anything of any importance going on in the area. We, we don't have any buildings except for a building in the distance. Um, but if you're really trying to hide some stuff, including a farm, you could very easily hide it in a location like this. That would be very hard to detect. 
Uh, so please, if you guys have done something similar to this, share it with me. I would love to see any any other additional creative ways you guys hide your bases. Um, but this works for a farm as well because this hatch actually serves as a light source. You wouldn't think it would. It's kind of a, a bug in my eyes. I wouldn't be surprised if this went away in future alphas. Um, but it does work as a light source being a hatch because it is an entry point. So you can very easily pop in here and your farm is safe underground all the way down to bedrock. It's still going to grow. Uh, so you can see we went inside here. Obviously you would normally have a ladder to get in, but we have a little growing room. You can see my corn isn't ready to pick yet, but it is growing down here. And that's with a hatch even that would technically cover the light in any kind of real world situation. But in this world, it's at my light source and it's my single light source that allows this little room down here, this little farm. Obviously you can make this a little bit bigger, but it shows this nice square size here. Um, but I have my, my farm growing all the way down at bedrock, out of sight, away from everything, hidden and safe indoors relatively, except for those zombies that can dig now. Um, but otherwise, it, it's safe and sound down here. Even at bedrock, it's growing as normal and as expected. Now, for those of you who stuck around after all the basics of farming in seven days to die here's a little bit more advanced tips for you there are different ways you could cover up your light source as we mentioned uh, the hatch works perfectly fine as far as letting in light to allow you to grow in your farm underground or indoors but you would kind of be surprised on what other materials you are are and are not able to grow under uh, before, there were some materials that restricted the light, so right now here's our growing pattern, but in some cases it would limit it from 8 spaces out from below your grow point uh, to maybe 7 or 6 in some cases, but now it seems to be all or nothing. So I have my potato seeds here. I have a simple wood window up here. Uh, so as you can see, uh, in most worlds you would think that hey this is letting light in this should work out fine it's just glass uh, but as you can see when I come down here to grow I'm not able to grow anything um, and just to reiterate that we're gonna go ahead and pop this guy out real quick uh, we even have it damaged here and now I'm able to grow so moral of the story clean up your windows but the actual window in it doesn't allow you to grow which is kind of weird um, so we'll go ahead and remove this real quick. And we're going to go ahead and pop in a, a simple glass pane. Now this looks, you know, it's just glass. It's letting in light. You would think it would give us uh, some growing ability. We have no growing ability. Unlike in Alpha 16 where we did have some growing ability with uh, glass pane, we have no growing ability anymore so we'll go ahead and, and break that out real quick and we'll pop in something else we were able to grow under before uh, being the bulletproof glass uh, now once again we have zero growing potential with bulletproof glass which once again we had this before uh, obviously it's letting light in but it's a no-go now so you want to be really careful on what items you can and cannot grow through. So we're going to pop this out real quick. And we're going to go ahead and pop in, let's say, our wooden bars down here. So we're going to go ahead and pop these guys in real quick. That'll work. And you can see this works just fine. It gives me growing potential all the way out to that eighth space. Can't go to ninth, and it grows it. Uh, so moral of the story here is you just want to be make sure you test your material. I tested a few others, so um, the metal trussle block, even the old one, they still work fine. They allow you to, to fully grow. Um, but there are some odd ones that just won't let you grow like they used to, like the wood window, unless you you know, break out the glass and things like that. So make sure you test your items before you invest in them to grow your farm. And then as always, remember the distance away does matter. So over here, quick little guide. This is where our entry point is. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then the ninth spot 
you cannot grow. Um, but you can grow out depending on the spot. I don't have this tilled, um, but that is your growth space. Um, so let me know what you guys think of this video. If this helped you guys out, good luck farming in Alpha 17. Hopefully things don't change too much when Alpha 18 comes out, probably within the next few months. Um, but until then, keep surviving. I'll catch you guys next time.